Hi folks, today it's all about poo pipes. We've got the old pipes off, we've restored them, painted them a bit, and uh, hopefully today it's all gonna fit back together, so stick around and we'll make it up. Okay, after a bit of measuring, a test fit, a dry fit, scratching of heads, finally at a point where I think I can cut this to the right length. We're gonna take 57 centimeters off the bottom of it. That sits our branch where we need it to come in from the side. More on why we're using plastic there in a minute, but let's make a start on this. That is 120 years old. There are hundreds and hundreds of years left in that. I don't know what plastic would look like after 120 years, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be as reusable as this. So that's basically where it's gonna end up. Then we've got a branch. Now this branch is also cast iron, it's brand new, but this is a push fit cast iron range. It's not cheap, but it's a great way of moving from cast iron to plastic, and also probably a good way if you're doing a whole new sack to go this way rather than these joints. The main thing is that we want to come below this sill, so hopefully that's worked out okay. We've got a decent fall coming along. I can't tell if that's going to end up below the sill or not. Let me just see if I can push it in to test it. Right, we've got a bracket in place. I've cleaned up the one below. Of course, we can't paint it really um, from here. So I'm gonna have to do that from below. Now, traditionally, cast iron pipe is corked with molten lead. Uh, you kind of jam a rope or hemp or something in there and then you pour molten lead in. We're not gonna be doing that. I don't mind using traditional materials, but I'm not gonna go that far when we don't necessarily need to. Plus, we've got a rubber reef below and that could be a bit dodgy. So what we're using is the system where you use the rope, you pack that in there, and then we use a sealant to finish it off. It's sealant adhesive, heavy duty sort of uh, pipe sealant. So let me get this in. So these pipe brackets are obviously not original. The original ones are the stake type points that are driven into the wall and then bent around like the ones below. Okay, that is our first joint done. We've got the rope pointed in there or tamped in or whatever you want to call it, corked in. And then we've gone around and used that pipe sealant. Now that is nice and chunky in there. It's going to firm up and hold everything. I've gone off and struck it off with this um, silicon tool. Now we can move on to this section, which is the branch. This is a different type of cast iron rather than LLC, which is like what you would buy now if you wanted exactly the same type. Um, from all accounts, that's made in the Far East somewhere and it's not as good as the old stuff that we've got here. So you might even be better off just buying reclaimed. These are about a tenner a piece. 
and it probably wouldn't cost much more than that to get them blast cleaned again and you can paint them however you want them. The new stuff that you buy comes with a bitumen black coating. It's a nightmare to come off if you want to clean it off. So for that reason, I went for the push fit system, which is cast iron. It's a Hargreaves foundry item. Um, it, yes, it's expensive, but it's got this two pack or a 2K finish on it. So if you're happy with black or if you've bought a load of it, you can get it made to the right color. Uh, but this should be okay now to fit in here in the same way. So we'll put the rope in there, we'll put the sealant in there. And then from this point onwards, we can go to our plastic pipe. And then from this way up, we've got another socket to go on here. We can go back to our last section of original to vent to the top. That's the plan. The reason I've gone with plastic, three reasons probably, two or three reasons, obviously cost. The section is about two and a half meters uh, that I need to do. You can't buy metal, the cast iron in that length, it would be too long, so we'd have to have a joint somewhere. It's a bit horizontal joint, which is a little bit trickier, I imagine. More clamps uh, or brackets to hold it to the wall. Plus we're gonna paint it. So bearing in mind that the paint that we're using, the linseed oil paint, takes really well to plastic, it just makes sense to do this. It's a single piece. Uh, the only bit that you might see is the elbow where it goes into the wall. But I'm actually gonna buy the cast iron effect bracket that sits over that and it completely disguises it. Hopefully by the time it's painted, no one will be any the wiser, apart from you lot. So we've got our branch, we need to take the plastic into the side of it. Now, these are really heavy duty rubber seals and you're meant to buy the tool, which is a gasket stretcher or something like that. It's a metal ring that sits inside, stretches it for a while before you fit it, so it relaxes it. We found that with the first one, plenty of lubricant, a brute force and a wiggle, got it on just okay. We don't need a 20 quid round bit of metal that we're never gonna use again. Your end should go on nice and easy. So let's get it in here first. Now it might go in easier than the metal did actually. Go on then, give it a twist it as you go. Put your hand, that's it. Then rock it back and forth a bit, like that. If we get the bottom in first, more lube. Oh yeah, yeah. I can feel it. I feel like a vet right now. Okay, down and pushed hard. So when a manufacturer suggests buying something to help installation, maybe they've got a point. We're upping our game, changing our lube. Give it a twizzle first, all the way around again, that's it. Now push. Wow, I won't lie, there are far easier ways to do this and I can see exactly why people rip out the whole lot and do it all in plastic, but I think we would done okay to retain probably about 80% of the original stack and then we just compromised a little bit by putting that section of plastic in, but I think that was the common sense thing to do. Uh, it's much lighter, less support, one length and when you see it all painted, I think we just about got away with it. Now that top section sits in, again it's got to go in the rubber seal, but with the weight of the cast iron and the fact that it's vertical, it went in a lot easier. Now the original way this stack was vented is just all the way to the top and then there was a big offset that came up and around the barge board at the end and it all looked a bit ugly. So what I've done is I've taken it up using that old section of cast iron, it's about a meter from the top of that window. Not that that window is ever opened and I've just replaced it actually. Now, bearing in mind a fitted an air emittance valve on the internal section of the pipework, I could have done away with that top section, but I wanted the aesthetics of it carrying on up beyond the joint and I had the old original cast iron to do that. So bearing in mind that it's high enough above that top window, I have left it vented on top and I've just put a cone in there to stop birds sitting on there. Um, but the main majority of the vent venting for the top floor will come from the Durgo that I've put in there. So it's kind of dual vented, I guess. But anyway, building control were happy for me to either do it just on the inside and cap off the top or leave both. 
and that's what I've done. And here you go, this is it, all painted up. And I think we've just about got away with it and it all ties in. Now, we only just managed to sneak it under that windowsill there. Uh, there weren't really many options because we were as low as we could coming out the wall and that was kind of our only route with the, with the angle of that branch. Anyway, that is it for the plumbing side of things, thank goodness. I have a whole bunch of editing to get wrapped up this week so I can share the final stages of the roofing project. That includes things like getting all the roof tiles bedded on, hunting down extra ridge tiles elsewhere, sorting out the stacks and the chimneys, the flue had to come out, and then I'm moving on to the guttering and the downpipes and all the, uh, the lovely rainwater goods that we have made up. So that's all to come. It's exciting times because I can officially say the scaffolding is now down. And I'll be sharing all that in the next week or two as well. So thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.